call this meeting of the Maya Public Schools School Board meeting in session. <laughs> I pledge our allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda, Dr. Vollmer. Would you preview the agenda, please? Yes, uh, everything is accurate on the agenda. We're asking for one adjustment on the agenda tonight, and that would be to move new business L, recommendation for curriculum adoptions, up to new business A. Um, we have some commitments that folks have to be gone, so I'd like to move that up. Uh, other than that, everything is accurate. We're ready to proceed. Number four, special reports, enrollment report. Dr. Vollmer. Yeah, uh, Mr. President, members of the board, uh, you have the enrollment report um, in, in front of you. We are um, seeing a, a more of a positive trend right now uh, as our current enrollment is uh, 7,517 uh, compared to 7,603 last year. Uh, but the good news is is that we are now only 86 students less than we at uh, the same time last year, and we were 102. Uh, one thing <coughs> I did want to point out, we mentioned it last time, I just wanted to clarify that um, we did have 33 uh, students that graduated early at Magic City Campus, and that is uh, significantly more than we've had in the past. So uh, after the first semester, they had graduated. So we're starting to see that number close up, which is a good sign. But you have all of that information, and I'll stand for any questions any of you may have. Board members? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Item B, special reports, construction update. Mark Ulrich? Yeah. <coughs> uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Mark Ulrich with Krauss Anderson. I'm the project manager uh, working on the new high school project. Uh, happy to be here to give you another update for the progress that we've seen in the last month or so. Um, so these first couple photos are just of the exterior elevations. Uh, overall on site, we have a lot of moving pieces that are taking place on the day-to-day -day basis. So we'll try to hit a few of the, the highlights here that we've got. Uh, the first photo on the left is of the west elevation. This is the framed wall uh, with those giant openings being windows that are going to be put in place here. Uh, we have some precast knee wall panels that are showing up starting next week. That will be on the lower portion. And that black portion on the top uh, is not the finished color, thankfully. Uh, our design team is much better than that. So uh, there's waterproofing that's been applied and we'll have metal panels that will be put over top of that uh, waterproofing in the next few weeks here. And then on the east side, uh, this is the new loading dock for the addition. Uh, they actually moved over to this area just today and are going to be grading that out, uh, getting ready for the concrete to be poured for that loading dock so that can be used for the school, uh, new furniture, equipment, materials being brought in through that loading dock on the east side. In the remodel space, uh, not a whole lot of things have changed. We're basically just wrapping up our remaining punch list items. I just wanted to note area A, which is the science classrooms and wing, and then all the north classrooms have been turned over to the district. Um, I know they're moving a lot of equipment and materials, furniture into those areas now. Cleaning is continuing and will be continuing until we're wrapping up with the project as punchless items are wrapping up. And our few items that are being worked on, uh, culinary space, which is that top left photo. Uh, we have some equipment, miscellaneous materials showing up for that. Uh, some modifications to the casework that are taking place. On the top right photo, that is of the culinary on the outside corridor area. Uh, we had a rolling co uh, coiling door that was put in place in that opening on the right side. And then the bottom right photo is of the main bathrooms uh, towards the front entrance of the school. Uh, tile is complete. We just have some drywall sanding taking, taking place and some casework that's going to be put in place uh, at that knee wall right in the middle of the photo there. Out at the sports complex on the north side of the property, uh, the teams and locker building, which is the lower right photo. Uh, mechanical and electrical trim out is taking place. Uh, we have the FRP that has been installed. Uh, that's the white panels that you can see everywhere. Light fixtures are in place. And then at the back of that photo, you can see the tile that was put in place for the restrooms and shower areas there. 
On the right side, in the unfinished area there, that's going to be some lockers that will be set up against that outside wall. The concessions building, uh, very similar progress. FRP is being put in place now. Painting is taking place on the plywood walls. Uh, mechan mechanical and electrical contractors are working in there as well. And then our overall photo is of the maintenance building. Uh, interior plywoods installation is <coughs> underway, and the painter is going to be following in immediately behind them once they're done. Uh, all of the buildings look pretty similar to that maintenance building. Siding is in place, waiting on some soffit materials uh, at the bare wood uh, towards the top of the building there to be installed. And the garage doors are in place on all the buildings as well. Then just kind of an overall site work update. Uh, we do have a tremendous amount of work to put in place here. Temperatures are looking pretty favorable, obviously, over the next few days here. We just need to keep our fingers crossed for no major weather events that are going to stop us uh, or hold us up in any manner. Uh, so as of earlier this week, frost was still present. That's kind of our main holdup for putting subgrade in and compacting. Uh, we did start removals, which is the photo uh, right there in the northwest lot, which is the red area in the top uh, diagram there. Uh, it sounds like frost is pretty close to coming out, so they're getting ready to put that subgrade in now, assuming we don't get any uh, negative temperatures here moving forward. And then as I mentioned, they actually did uh, jump over to the orange area, the east side of the building, uh, here starting today to start doing some grading over there. So it's good to see progress on the site work and the parking lots. As I said, we just need to keep our fingers crossed and hope for some favorable temperatures moving forward here. We'll move into the addition. Uh, this is area F, which is the music and tech classrooms on the north side of the addition. Uh, mechanical electrical trim out is kind of taking place uh, as rooms are wrapping up with painting. Uh, we did have a big, a major uh, starting task here this week, which was the sound practice rooms for the music classrooms. I was going to grab a photo of them, but uh, they were just getting started here. So uh, seeing those two rooms going in, there's some good progress in those music classrooms, uh, showing that they're getting pretty close to wrapping up. Uh, we have floor protection down pretty much everywhere throughout the space, getting ready to hit that point where we're pulling that up and cleaning those rooms out. The corridors will be the last areas to finish in there. Uh, the right photo uh, represents a typical corridor in those areas. We still need ceiling grid tiles installed, uh, but we'll be having mechanical and electrical contractors up in those ceiling spaces here for the next few weeks. So ceiling grid will follow probably towards the end of April here. We'll jump to the theater, uh, which we're starting to see some good progress in. Uh, since the last update, we've had the framing on the exterior walls go up there. Uh, mechanical and electrical contractors are doing their rough in in that framed space now. Uh, and actually this week we started the scaffolding erection, which uh, you can see in the middle of the space there. That will go all the way up to the roof uh, area, and that will be used for those mechanical electrical rough ins to take place. It's going to be about 20 to 25 days roughly of just rough in taking place in there. So. Even though it may not seem like there's tremendous progress taking place, it's all going to be up in the ceiling area. And then since last update, all of the concrete pours <coughs> have been completed in the theater as well. I will jump to area G, which is the kitchen and a few miscellaneous classrooms and common space. Uh, so painting is underway in the welding classroom. That's the lower center photo. Those are the individual welding booths there. The painter's actually up in the corner. Uh, FRP installation is in progress in the kitchen. That's the top center photo. Um, just to the left in that photo, you can see the walk-ins uh, are installed as well. Uh, we'll have framing of soffits, electrical rough-in, and drywall work taking place for the next few weeks in the commons area. Uh, in the right photo, you can see those are a few of the soffits that need to be framed up. Uh, there's lights that go on there, quite a bit of coordination that takes place from the <coughs> subs and all those soffits as well. Uh, probably the room that's had the most progress over the last month or so in terms of finishing out would be our gymnasiums. Uh, the wood flooring contractor has been in there for about a little over a month now. And this is actually for both gymnasiums, the auxiliary gym and the main gym. 
Uh, they were actually applying the final two coats of the sealer that goes on the wood floor today. And um, they'll be demobilizing from the site here uh, starting tomorrow. So game lines are in place. Uh, we have the logo in the center of the courts. Uh, in terms of just wrapping things up, we have some wall pads that need to go on, acoustical panels, uh, floor base from the flooring contractor, and then those openings on the right side of the photo uh, get a doorway installed in once we can pull those out of there. When will bleachers go in? Bleachers are not scheduled to go until J July. Okay. Yep. So we'll have a little bit of a lull in terms of work taking place in there, but it's good to have a place kind of finished out that we can uh, shut the door to. We'll jump to H and J, uh, which is surrounding the gymnasiums, uh, restrooms, wrestling, and corridor space there. Uh, so on the left side is our, the left side is the east corridor for the addition, if that makes sense. Uh, running down by the cardio and weights building, or weights room. Uh, sanding, mud tape taking place on the drywall there. A uh, painter will be moving in here after he's wrapping up in those welding booth spaces. And then on the top right is our wrestling room. Again, mud, tape, sand taking place in that room. Painter will be next coming in there. And then our large bank of restrooms, which is on the west side in those areas in the cafeteria. Uh, we're just painted out here in the last week. And the tile crew actually just moved in here in the next day or the last day or so. Um, so it's good to have the tile crew in there. There will be a lot of time spent in those restrooms just with how big they are. Um, It'll be good to get those wrapped up. And then our pool. Uh, again, this is a Mirtha pool. These are panelized systems that are being put in place. Uh, the wall panel installation has been taking place for the last few weeks. Uh, backfilling will be the next activity that will take place. That will be uh, basically some rock put in between the outside wall and those panels that are up right now. Masonry is complete up on the mezzanine area. Uh, a lot of mechanical and electrical work taking place up there. It kind of shows in that top right photo. Uh, the upper portion of that is the mezzanine. A lot of CMU block uh, getting up to that area. <coughs> and then the bottom right photo is of our locker room area. Uh, framing is complete. Again, a lot of rough-in <coughs> taking place in those walls. A few of them are being closed up as they're wrapping up with rough-in. Uh, in the next couple weeks, our main goal is to get the painter into the locker room area, start painting those CMU walls, and uh, make a big push through the locker room space to be wrapped up. Any questions from anyone? Any questions? Thank you. I, I just got my first visit last week. So. Nice. It, it was quite the walk from one end to the other end and to try not to step in the wrong places because we had tacky feet or we stepped on some of those strips. I, th I didn't see any mice on the strips, but <laughs> I got my shoes yeah. stuck to them. Yeah, but <laughs> no, so it was awesome. It was great to be in there. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Next item, cold business renaissance zone request. Dr. Ballmer, Mr. Billingsley. Uh, you want to do your consent agenda first. Okay, excuse me, I do want to do the consent. <laughs> Item five, the consent agenda. <laughs> what, what's your wish for? Move to approve. Okay, I have a motion. I would second that. This is Doc and call a roll, please. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Gessner? Yes. Motion carries. We approve the consent agenda. Now item six, old business, renaissance zone. Good afternoon, uh, President Gessner and members of the, of the uh, school board. Um, just want to give you a quick update as to what happened since your last meeting. The board County Commissioners have taken action on the amendments that I have proposed, and I'd like to go through them one at a time. And then afterwards, you're, I will stand available for your questions. The first amendment was uh, granted a new benefit for the Renaissance Zone. Uh, as for a recap, right currently our Renaissance Zone offers a <coughs> five-year property tax benefit for an investment of 50% or greater. The state legislature is now allowing us to go up to eight years 
at a minimum investment of 75%. The Ward County Commissioners chose to put a threshold of 150% to, re to reach that eight-year benefit. So I'll give you an example. If a building is worth $200,000, uh, under the state's proposal, they would only have to invest 150000 in that building to qualify. But Ward County basically doubled that number. Now that, that property owner would have to invest $300,000 into that building to qualify for the eight-year benefit. They'll still be able to qualify for the five if they can't reach the 150% 150, 150 threshold. But um, the Ward County chose 150, and I have no objection to that. And I'm asking the school board to approve that today as well. Amendment number two was the second island for the Renaissance Zone, and Ward County Commissioners voted to approve that amendment. The third amendment uh, was to grant a 10-year extension to the Minot Renaissance Zone. Ward County Commissioners voted to approve a five-year uh, ex extension to the zone. So therefore, this, the zone would expire in 2029, <coughs> and we'd be coming back to that time asking for another extension. It would not expire in 2034. Amendment no number four was denied by the County Commissioners because uh, they would have, it would uh, only qualify to projects that uh, received a benefit at least 30 years prior. So the, the earliest project that the City of Minot approved was Planet Pizza, and that was 2000 in 2003 when that project was wrapped up. <coughs> so Planet Pizza will not be able to apply for a second benefit until at least 2033 under the new state law. So there really is no reason to adopt amendment number four at this time if we're only going to do a five-year extension of the program. And amendment number five was amendments to the uh, to the Renaissance Zone map. We're going to take two blocks out of out of the Renaissance Zone. The one they're both downtown. One is the the, the block containing um, uh, the uh, CTE building and uh, and then the Minot Housing Authority property, and the other being the block in the southwest corner, Broadway Burdick, which contains a mattress store. Those, that those, we're going to take those blocks out. We're going to relocate them up to North Hill. We're going to put the blocks in containing the, <coughs> the Economy Hotel and the Vegas Hotel. And uh, the Ward County Commissioners did approve that amendment with a reduction in the block size uh, of, of Block 2F. We, if you recall the last meeting, uh, I had a map that 2F was much greater in size. We, we shrunk it down to only include the, the hotel the Hardys and there's a vacant lot between the two. So those were the five amendments that were proposed. Um, you're welcome to address these individually or you can just adopt them in one motion, uh, adopt basically what Ward County had adopted. So I stand available for your questions and I ask for your support. Board members, any questions? Mr. President, uh, to start the discussion, I will make the motion that we approve uh, the Renaissance Loan request and uh, adopt all of the amendments as proposed by Ward County. And uh, uh, having been uh, very much involved in that process of the amendments, uh, I make the motion, so. Okay, thank you. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second that. Okay, second from Mrs. Berryman. Any questions, board? So I would be curious to know kind of some of the, um, personally, I do like the addition of the percentages that was proposed by the county, just because then there's a higher investment by the people that are actually proposed to doing something instead of a, a lesser investment. Um, I kind of think you just have more, I mean, you really have more to lose, so you're mm -hmm. willing to kind of put more out, but I would be interested to see maybe what Jim had to say or what their discussions were regarding that. Yeah, we, we did, to, uh, uh, we, we just thought that uh, we, when we're giving exemptions that they really need to be earned and, and, uh, and not to make them, they need to be uh, where the investment is eventually, we're, we're going to receive more in property tax down the line. And uh, uh, by doing this uh, and the value that they need to invest in it, we will, the, both the county and the school. 
tell you, we'll, we'll all benefit in, in the long run. And uh, by uh, saying this is what they need to invest, we more or less ensure that, that that's going to happen if they invest that much money in, into their uh, uh, remodeling and their projects. Uh, another thing I'd like, like to add is uh, that when, especially up on the North Hill area, it's such a, a first impression when you come into our city. And I can't imagine you all don't share the same thing I've done where, where I look over and I see Hardy sitting there and you, we have all heard about the Vegas Motel and its, its problems and the rolling pin. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we discussed it quite a bit and I think it's pretty easy to understand then the, the amendments we made and the, what what we wanted, and uh, uh, I'll certainly stand for any questions I can that you would like more more direction on or discussion, and whatever your opinions are. This is the counties that you know we just happen to be the first. If uh, if not, it could have just well been the school board where we're. We're going through these amendments two one by one. So. Any other questions, statements? I do have to say that I do think this. I mean, I grew up in that area, and it is plated. Sadly, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't look great. Yeah. And when we're thinking that's where our new high school is, while it's on the opposite side of North Hill, like there could really be some stuff that's revitalized. So, if we have that opportunity, that people have to put their own cash in at a higher percentage and we can all get some of that benefit, it would be a nice space or area that could actually be improved, for sure. Mr. President, another thing that, that came up was uh, that uh, uh, these buildings, a lot of them, in order to make them functional again, it's going to take a lot of investment and capital to, to you know, what it's like so many buildings, if you're going to move in there, either the building's not usable for what you want <coughs> for your business, or you're going to have to remodel. I mean, it's very seldom that everything you could move in and all oh, this is just what we need. I mean, there's going to be a lot of investment required to to utilize those buildings, you know, without uh, without major remodeling. But in our opinion, so. any other questions, statements? Mrs. Dockin, would you read the motion, please? Yep, so it is to approve um, the request, the Renaissance Zone request, and adopt the amendments as proposed by Ward County. Any further statements, questions? Mrs. Dockin, would you call a roll, please? Rostad? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Gessner? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, back to the agenda. We have <coughs> modified that. Yes, so item L will now move to the top of the new business, and here is Tara and Sam. President Gester and members of the board, my name is Tara Jordan, and I'm the ELA coordinator for Minot Public Schools. With me is Samantha Jones, and she is the math coordinator. Um, Dr. Ball asked for us to share with you the curriculum resource adoption process and recommended recommendations for K-5 science and social studies, and 612 <coughs> social studies resources. You should have received the current adoption process, which we will highlight. The first step in the process starts with Samantha and I. We gather samples from companies based on research, teacher recommendation, as well as information gathered from districts across the state. Next, committees were formed for both elementary and secondary. At our first meeting, Members completed standards review on all of the resources to make sure the resources aligned with both our state standards as well as MPS prioritized standards. Materials review, vendor on-site presentations on top, the top two or three companies was the next um, phase in the process. A teacher and community viewing opportunity was held and then at our final meeting, consensus um, was reached by committee members which Samantha will now share for a recommendation for adoption. We looked at many, many great resources before we came to the decision. The K-1 committee members are recommending Social Studies and Science Weekly. 
Uh, some reasons, some highlights they liked is it's one platform for both content, so it would be a one-stop place for educators and students. For K-1, it was very age appropriate. It wasn't something that, that was huge that they wouldn't have time for in their day. And it had really good supporting resources as well. For grades two through five committee members and six through eight, all of them, they are recommending TCI for both science and social studies. Again, one of the, the big highlights is that it's one platform. So they'll have science and social studies on there together. Um, it had really good re uh, supporting resources. And it's very editable. The TCI platform, uh, you can bring in your own things and make it your own and move things around. That was one thing the teachers liked as well. For grades 9 through 12, social studies, they rec are recommending McGraw-Hill and BFW. They thought it was the platform was user-friendly for both students and teachers, and them, they as well liked the supporting resources that went with it. Board members, yes. Are any of the, the materials consumable? I mean, in that teachers don't have to run stuff? Um, Social Studies and Science Weekly for K-1 is consumable. Mm -hmm. um, for TCI, for the Social Studies side, teachers chose to not purchase the full consumable. Rather, they chose and they thought it would be more efficient to just run the Black Line Masters that they felt that they needed instead of buying a whole workbook that they maybe wouldn't utilize the whole thing. So. For sci for the K-5 science, there are, it, there are consumables, mainly uh, to write down their thoughts and things on experiments and things like that. Right. So. But there are a lot of things they can print off if they mm -hmm. wish. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? When you, just because I don't have the role that you guys have, when you talk about like your community viewing, and I know that you guys said that they felt it was pretty user friendly for kind of all parties, mm -hmm. do does, is there ever a connection to like students that would ever see what this, like how a platform or content works to know like, oh, they really do get it? I'm just curious. You mean as far as like, it, did we show students it? Right. We did not. Okay. I think I'm just, some I was of just the curious. teachers did okay. go in, some mm -hmm. of the teachers did go in and because they Practice had, they had um, mm -hmm. online access the committee members okay. did and so some of them did teach a lesson out awesome. of it okay. yeah I wouldn't Great. say all of them not did. all of them but some of them, okay. some of them did. thank yeah. you mm -hmm. anyone else question how, how long has it been since we've had the social new social studies let's say I think the social studies is more than 15 years old same and science is, is about that as well okay there is online, I mean, since we have students that have Chromebooks available at all times, there's more and better online access, correct? Correct, well? yep. We really haven't had any online access for the RSK5 Science and Social Studies because they didn't have it then. Right. So it's going to be... Single nice. sign-on, so students and teachers will sign on through Clever, Clever. like they're used to with all of their other companies as well, all their other books. And accessible too, like if we ever had to go sure. to a virtual... Yes. You know, day where things are closed or whatever. Okay. Yeah, that's one of the things oh, that yeah. we check too. Perfect. Nice. Okay. And those things will be here ready to go next fall. We sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Move to adopt their recommendation. Okay, we have a motion to adopt the recommendations. A second? A second that. A second from Mrs. Berryman. Any further discussion? Assistant superintendents, you've been involved in that? We have. Um, I, I'd like to publicly thank uh, Mrs. Jordan and, and Ms. Jones. Uh, they've done a nice job leading, uh, leading our groups of teachers. And, and again, we hosted a, a viewing for public and, and had some good, uh, good comments and, and feedback too from, from our community. So um, their leadership's invaluable. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Mrs. Duck and call the roll, please. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Gaster? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. So we have new social studies science, yes. Next item is item A, resignations, Mrs. Dalton. Mr. President, members of the board, there's a number of resignations and retirements for you today. All are requesting <coughs> to be finished at the conclusion of their current contract. The first we have for you today is Brooke Johnson. She's requesting to resign. We recommend that you approve. So moved. 
It's second. Call a roll, please. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Deborah Rasmussen is requesting to resign for the purpose of retirement. We recommend that you approve. Move to approve, Mr. President. I'll second that. Okay, a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Jenny Bobo is requesting to resign. We recommend that you approve. So moved. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Lauren Shields is requesting to resign. We recommend that you approve. I so move. Wait a second. Call the roll, please. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Macy Portland is requesting <coughs> to resign. We recommend that you approve. Move to approve. Second that. Call the roll, please. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Madison Bischoff is requesting to resign. We recommend that you approve. I would move. Second. Call the roll, please. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Gessner? Yes. Sherry Broderick is requesting to resign for the purpose of retirement. We recommend that you approve. I would move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Frosted? Yes. Gessner? Yes. And that was the final resignation for you. Okay, good, thank you. Item B, Dean's resignation from six hour assignments. Yes, we recommend all. that you approve that resignation list as presented. So moved. I'll second. Any questions, discussion? And correct, these were just on this list and not last time because they were omitted before when we had the sixth hour assignment stuff. Talked about yeah, earlier, it's, it's still sixth hour assignments, sure. but we didn't have them approved before. Okay, correct. Yep. You saw a list, I believe, in February. Right, okay. Call the roll, please. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Item C, request for leave for child rearing, Mrs. Dahl. And there's just one request for you today. That's from Jensen Lopez, who's requesting leave for child rearing for the 24-25 contract year. It is the only leave available to her for that time. We recommend that you approve. I would move to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Call the roll, please. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Thank you. Item C, request for leave for, uh, excuse me, item D, United Air Force Base, Minor Public School Agreement 24-25. Yeah, Mr. President, members of the board, do you have the agreement in front of you, which is the agreement we ask you approve every year, uh, which provides Minor Public Schools the opportunity to educate students in the Minor Air Force Base. Uh, this was already voted on by the Minot Air Force Base Board. Uh, the only thing that is different from previous years is just simply the dates. You know, we go from 23, 24 to 24, 25. So uh, it remains the same. Uh, we are the operational school district. We agreed to provide educational opportunities for students at Minot Air Force Base. Um, and yeah, it's pretty self explanatory, but we ask your approval. Board, need a motion? Move to approve, Mr. President. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Call the roll, please. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Frosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Items E through H, Mrs. Dahl. There's a couple of new policies to present to you. Um, they come out of Laura's office. The first is ICCB disposal of school equipment and supplies. 
We're recommending that you approve this on first and final reading today. If I could interject too, if you have any questions why uh, these are coming forward, uh, Mrs. Dockin is uh, certainly able to answer those for you. Really what, as we move forward with you know, the sale of things like portable classrooms or disposal of uh, equipment. Now, you know, we're getting requests, you know, can I keep my chair that I had at Bell all of those years? That We have to have a process in place, and this policy uh, is essentially our, our uh, process, and it has been vetted by the North Dakota School Boards Association. So, uh, Mrs. Dock, and I don't know if there's anything you want to add, but there's nothing majorly changing the way we do business. It just solidifies a process. It's, it's just supplementary policy to help kind of guide some of the questions that have come up and give some clarity so we can um, move forward if there's anything that we do need to dispose of or sell um, as we realign the district <coughs> this summer. Any other questions? Call the roll, please. Okay. Oh. don't have a motion. Move to approve. Okay. <laughs> Good. Second. Good help. Good. Any further? Okay. Call the roll, please. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Frosted? Yes. Gessner? Yes. The next is policy IAD disposal of school real estate. We recommend that you approve on first and final reading. I so move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. So I have a question. If any of this would come up before there was any type of sale or you, you know, enact like an appraiser, realtor, any of that, is that information that comes to the board first? Always. <coughs> Always. Okay. Yeah, we would never. We may, we may look, let's say for example, property is owned by the district and there'd be a, somebody would come to us and say, boy, I'd really like to buy that property. Uh, you as the board are the only people that can ultimately sell that property. So it will always end up coming to you. What this solidifies is essentially like, we're going to have to use a professional appraiser. You can't take public funds and ever, you know, sell those public funds for whatever you'd want to sell for, or give somebody a good deal or whatever, you'd have to have it appraised. And then there's a process for public sale as well. Um, the property we own is the original Ramstead property and then the 70 acres south of the existing new Ramstead. Um, the Washington, somebody asked me the other day, the Washington property where old Washington was, was sold with the building about 20 years ago. Uh, and then the, uh, the other land, the old Lincoln. The Lincoln, yeah, and, and that was part of the eminent domain buyout for uh, for the flood protection. So those properties are no longer owned by the district. But long and short, nobody at this table can sell that land. It has to be a plurality vote of the board. Okay. Yeah. But I think the nicest part of it is it does talk in there specifically about fair market value. You can't just give somebody a heck of a deal on a property. So, board, do we have a motion? <coughs> Any further discussion? I think there was a motion and a second, and I was discussing because I was asking questions. <laughs> I should be writing this down, shouldn't I? It's okay. Oh. Moved by Baron and second by Kraft. Yes. Okay. <coughs> Call a roll, please. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Gessner? Yes. And the final policy for your review for adoption is HDB revenues from school owned properties. Again, we recommend that you approve on first and final reading today. And again, the point of clarification here is you know, what would happen to monies if you would rent out an existing property? And the plan would be that it would go to the general fund, but then you as a board ultimately could decide where you would want that money to go. But again, it's just solidifying or codifying a process. Move to approve, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any f more questions, thoughts? In, in, in the end, this 
ends up being a board decision. Correct? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Good enough for me. Call the roll, please. Kraft? Yes. Frosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Berryman? Yes. Gesser? Yes. Motion carries. Item H. If I could just interject for a second, though. Yes, it does. But like when we talk about selling uh, portable classrooms, those are like market value, and we, we've been able to sell some of those or move some of those around in the past. But when you're talking about real estate, real property, that, that's a different story. That's your role as a board. Thank you. Thank you. Because you just adopted those above policies, we're recommending that you rescind today policy 521 obsolete equipment. So moved. I would second. Any questions? Obsolete equipment. Just what it obviously what it says, stuff we no longer need, right? Okay. Is it relegated to just like school equipment? Like, I mean, like filing cabinets and desks, or is it like bigger Te than that? Technology. Oh, technology, okay. Yeah, it could be. You know, we have sometimes people request to keep their computer, but if it's one we can put back into circulation, we <coughs> do. If it's an older computer, you know, the, there might be a sale of it. But uh, okay. the idea of it is, is again, it just solidifies that general process. So. We've got something in writing, and we're getting those requests, sure. you know, all the time. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Call the roll, please. Berryman. Yes. Kraft. Yes. Rosted. Yes. Herman. Yes. Gesser. Yes. Thank you. Item I: Early release dates. Yeah. Um, Ashley's not here. Brenda, do you want to take that? Sure. Um. President Gessner, members of the board, in your board packet there is a list of um, our recommendations for professional development. There will be, next year there will only be two full days of professional development, one on September 3rd and then one in January. We will not have the April 2nd full day that we had this year. We That was put in place to really bring those new staffs together because we knew the secondary buildings will open and then we request that there is five early release dates um, we are we're adding one request to bring the inside outside threat rotation back into play um, we did not do inside outside threat this year in our buildings but we feel with um, not that Central is a new campus, but with mine at North and Central with the new staff and students, we feel like it's important to work with the mine at PD and get the outside threats back um, in those buildings right away so they can work through that with um, the PD. And then we just rotate our original two that were was the MTS academic and behavior with that inside outside threat. Um, our April 2nd, which would become early release, would be when we'd work on our data, reviewing our data, and our final May 7th early release would be a, our, self, our staff does their self-assessments for the year and develops a growth plan through our Marzano um, growth and evaluation model, and then Cognia is our school improvement model, and there is a um, overall school assessment, and in the following year, we'll, we will be monitored. So it's important that we start doing this as a staff so we have that data in our Cognia School Improvement. And when you say you'll be monitored, Bryn, like what does that mean exactly? For accreditation. OK, thank you. And then um, at the beginning of the school year, we did not, you know, we have our usually two back to school days. We would like to look at those as workshop days in the schools and doing some things and move away from calling them PD or professional development days because they are where the teachers are coming back and being prepared to for the year, not additional training happening during those days. Mr. President, all members of the board, and, and Brynn, I apologize, but we have so many days that are built into the master contract that are our full day PD. And I, I can't seem to pull up on my phone now our contract 
for our calendar for next school year. Like Sarah has it. it. Okay. You want to pass it down? Yep. Johnson. My I was just gonna grab it out of my ear. My old eyes and my phone. I get asked about it a lot, so it's on my desktop. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I have it in my email because I thought I asked for it too. Okay, so our proposed in the calendar was a September third date, which you're still um, requesting. Um and then the 20th of, of um, January, which is Martin Luther King Day. And there was no other third day built into the school year. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because when we talked about that in the teacher master contract and negotiations, it's specifically listed as the number of days, so. The final, um, the third day used to be that very last day of school. And we took that and day. And last year negotiated and removed yeah. that. Yeah. Very good. I just wanted to double check on that. So, any other questions, yeah. comments? Move to approve. Okay, we have a motion to approve. I would second that motion. Any further questions? So, Doc, and call the roll, please. Herman. Yes. Berryman. Yes. Kraft. Yes. Frosted. Yes. Gessner. Yes. Motion carries. Item J. Minus public schools. E.L. Magnet School Concept, Mrs. Iverson. Yes, President Gester, members of the board. Um, today we just wanted to make you aware this doesn't require a motion or any voting, but um, when we started to look at efficiencies for the district, um, we not only looked at budget efficiencies, but people efficiencies and things that would be beneficial to our students. So one thing we have started to research not this is a draft i wrote draft it's pretty official on the top i wrote it in pen today um but is is the the move to um combining some of our el students into our bigger schools right now our el teachers are traveling between sometimes four buildings throughout the week to service maybe one student at a smaller elementary school and then that students, they're receiving services, but it would be beneficial for them to have that teacher in their building all day long and um, have access to that educator at any time that they might need some support. And so um, Dr. Fall and myself started to look at our EL students and um, got some information from Billy Boyoff and just started an initial thought that if we took one, two, three, four, five, six elementary schools listed on the top and those are, the schools are not set in stone, that's just where we're starting. And then a middle school and a high school and transitioning students to those buildings, the support that they would receive would be more and our teachers would spend less time in their cars driving from school to school. Um, the bottom draft or the bottom, the new to the EL school, if we go this direction, this would affect 57 students. So you, would, you can see North Plains, three new students would be coming into that building. So it's not a large number of students transitioning. Um, to the new schools. The biggest numbers are truly at that middle school level where there would be 25 students there transitioning to the school and our high school level um, because right now they're split into Central and Magic City and now next year scheduled into both buildings. And so just wanted you to be aware that as we're looking at things and um, starting the conversations with our EL teachers and principals, um, principals will see this tomorrow, we just wanted you to have the know that this was discussion that we were having. Um, we all, I've also worked with um, Barry Brooks, our transportation director, on 
providing transportation for these students that we're assigning to a building outside of their home school. So if the student was to go from Bel Air to Lewis and Clark or Perkett, we would provide transportation for that family. And so it's all in the works just to see if it's a possibility. Um, we are going to start, like I said, speak to the principals tomorrow. The L teachers have looked through this, have looked at the students and just starting some maybe community discussions with families too. How were those initial conversations went? Um, the EL teachers feel very positive that having two schools that they can be in every day going to those buildings back and forth between those two buildings would be beneficial to students. They're very sad that, you know, they're, they're, they've grown connected to their schools and their students and that might shift a little. So there is some, you know, sadness that they might be in a different school than they were this year, but they, they feel strongly that it would benefit students. And that's the most important part. <coughs> and so. If, if I may, um, you know, students that are sitting with maybe just one EL student in a building or two, moving them into a, a school that has multiple friendships, just the connection and the peer support too, um, you know, it was talked about too. So the benefits not only of having teachers and, and paraprofessionals access more of the time, um, just a number of students where they can um, connect and, and, you know, support each other. So. Build community. This year we had a few students that um, were assigned by boundaries to be at Edison that we moved over to Washington which is very close I mean down the street just because and it's they built connections as families they you know mm -hmm. they have more support mm -hmm. with their staff and so um, at a, on a small scale we had three <coughs> students this year that we did have go to another building because there were not any other students at Edison mm -hmm. just to and it has worked very nicely and those students have been transported and what impact does that have on when you talk like about theory and transportation? Mm -hmm. Like what impact does that have when we think of we have a new situation where we have other people who are being relocated and put in different places that we said we would help their busing situation as well? Does that, what does that do with that so staff? Talking with um, Mr. Brooks is he has four Bell and McKinley students. He already has those bus routes set. He's been doing practice runs. This, the bus drivers have been doing some practice runs this week and, reaching, and they'll begin reaching out to families and setting up those. Um, when looking at these students, there is space on many of our special education buses that bus students in these areas. So when this, with the small number of students, it might not be additional busing. It might be adding those students to buses that are already going for special education students in the area. So it's just planning um, and working. You know, we would have to work with the, the bus that comes from the Air Force Base and things like that. So there, there are things we'd have to look at. But overall, looking at it, um, not an addition when we've already restructured some of our busing needs. And I think the biggest advantage for the kids is that now instead of having that EL teacher in the building for just a couple hours a day, now they have better access mm -hmm. to that support. And even for scheduling and everything else, it just, it really works nice. And our, our teachers are great, but when they're driving, mm -hmm. you know, from one building to another, that's time away from kids. So it's a good model. I'm excited about the opportunity to to see it happen. We, we, we currently use the model with our gifted and talented program. We, you know, those students are at Edison, mm -hmm. so they're together and have that, so. Mrs. Iris, what kind of emotion are you looking for? None, just awareness for you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Next item, K, Assistant Superintendent, mm -hmm. Secondary Education, Dr. Paul. President Gessner, members of the board, I am pleased and, and happy <coughs> to report uh, we had three very good candidates interview with us last Friday. 
Um, we had a three-part interview set up. Um, we had uh, a few principals uh, work with uh, a number of students that did part of the interview. Um, Mrs. Iverson led a, a group of leaders, and Mr. Gessner and I also followed up with, with some interview questions. And so we have gone through the evaluation and the reference uh, portion, and, and we're ready to re make a recommendation. Uh, we're recommending that Mr. Todd Kaler, uh, current uh, principal at Roosevelt, uh, be the next assistant soup for secondary for Minot Public Schools. Need a motion on yes. yes, please. Uh, I will make that motion that we move uh, Mr. Keeler into the assistant superintendent position. Is there a second? Second. Mr. President, I'd just like to say I think he's a great candidate and will fulfill the duties very well, but He's been just tremendous at Roosevelt. So. <laughs> It'll be sad. Anyway, yeah. And thank you for all the years and what you've done for our students over there. That's anyway. But now you can just have more. <laughs> Mr. Kaler is here. Any other statements, questions? Let's call the roll and then. Rosted. Yes. Herman. Yes. Berryman. Yes. Kraft. Yes. Gesser. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Kaler, Dr. Kaler, congratulations. Right? It is doctor, right? No, nope, Mr. Oh. Mr. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I thought I remembered that, so thank you. Thank you. Next item, recommendations. Okay. Teacher report. Teacher report. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, you should have received that new teacher report number one for the 23 or 24 25. I'm sorry, I'm just seeing that now. That's a mistake. It's 24 25 school year. We recommend that you approve it as presented. So moved. I would second. So, Doc, can call the roll, please. Berryman? Yes. Kraft? Yes. Rosted? Yes. Herman? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Next board meeting is May 9th. Yes. May 9th uh, is here. Again, 4.30 is the time for regular board meeting. That's all that I have. And we have a school visit next Wednesday. I, I have. I have double check here. I believe that that would be right, but I will just double check. <laughs> That's what I have anyway. Uh, next week we visit. Hoven. Yep. next Wednesday. next week. Yeah. And then there's another one coming up right away in the beginning of May, I believe, too. So I'll have to double check. But I'll have Amy send those out again to everybody. Yes, Wednesday. 